Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Beyond the Bubbles, the podcast about comics, anime, pop culture, movies, and all that that entails. Uh, I, of course, am Terry Williams, and normally Ben Dunn is next to me, but he is out today. You'll notice another face here sitting in the seat to my left. Um, It's an artist that I met um, back in this past summer at a show that we did together. Um, It's Mr. Daniel Scott. How are you, sir? Doing good. Doing well. Good, good. Um, Wanted to have you on up for a while. Um, Mm -hmm. One of his pieces is here, as you can see, Swamp Thing. Um, What really caught my eye when we first met with your art was it's different. So, well, just tell us a little bit about, about, about it and then how you came to do it this way. Well, take in mind that uh, what I make all my art with is candy wrappers. That's it. Right. All I use, just candy wrappers. And so there's a good story behind it. Uh, this is 30 years ago, coming up in March. It'll be 30 years. Wow. <laughs> it's, okay. it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been quite a journey. So I started back in 1994 in the middle of getting my uh, my bachelor's degree in art. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I was at the last of my uh, projects I was working on. And my professor told me to do something instead of bothering everybody. So, <laughs> As, I've heard that so many times. Yeah, just... yeah. So that's just part of my uh, my personality. So I, uh, in front of me, we did uh, batik, which is a dye bath that you would uh, create uh, patterns and so on with. And also behind me, they were doing stained glass and doing mosaics and things. Now, I wanted to do the mosaics because of the the, the, the chips and then the grout and mm-hmm. then you do all these things. But uh, I couldn't afford it. But I had, the, I had Starburst on me and... Honestly, I mixed the two together because of the wax base. I was actually dyeing them at one time and uh, gluing them together like a paper mosaic. Wow. So those two things together plus what I had on me, uh, it snowballed very fast. And my professors basically told me, this is it. This is your bread and butter. It's exact words. Really? Yeah. So they also told me to finish my assignments. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and after that, uh, but anytime I needed to go in the studio or get away and work on one of these pieces, I had free reign to it. Wow. So um, it seems a little more, I know I've watched Ben draw and it's sure. kind of amazing just watching them create and how quickly they can do a sketch of whatever. How long does one of your pieces take on, on average? On average, I would say 11 by 17 takes right around between 24 to 36 hours. Wow. Yeah, I know um, the last I saw you was in New Orleans at Fan Expo. Mm -hmm. And um, (laughs) you um, saw you Saturday? Yeah, I saw you Saturday, Mm -hmm. and you were kind of tired because you'd been up really late on a commission. (laughs) (laughs) The guy gave me – I was game, but uh, by 4 in the morning I was done. It was yeah. a doctor. It was a Doctor Adam. It was a Valiant book. Mm-hmm. So he gave me a book, um, the Geomancer, and he had people that were going in there doing uh, commission work. So they pay for it, and just like anybody, they go to different artists and and to get uh, different characters in the Valiant uh, uh, universe. Mm-hmm. So the first thing on my mind was, you know, Solar Man and the Atom. I went. I need to right. do this. This is good. Yes. Yeah, uh, so he he bit, and I was on the hook. But the guy told me right afterwards that I needed to be done with this before tomorrow morning. <laughs> so I uh, did my research, got a drawing up, uh, got it approved, and went to town. And it was literally four in the morning, and I was I was beat. But I got it done, and it looked great. Yeah, that's the difference with like. So if someone asks Ben to do a sketch, he can do a sketch in roughly twenty. 30 minutes, depending on what it is. Yeah, exactly. And like with you, it's not quite that easy. Yeah, the sketch part um, is exactly what Ben uh, goes through. It's maybe 20, 30 minutes just to get the feel of what I'm doing before I I go in. So Mm -hmm. it's very methodic. And then when it goes to the process, the execution, it takes a little bit of time. Yeah. So has your passion always been, I know most of your stuff, um, as we'll we'll show some pieces here soon, Mm -hmm. are comic related. Uh, but there are pop culture references, Star Wars, that kind of thing. Yeah. What was your biggest influence that you, like when you first did a piece back in college, mm-hmm. what did you start out with? Honestly, it's Edward Munchs and Picasso. It was the Weeping Women series. The reason why I did, because I uh, we went to the field trip. I was in the Los Angeles area, 
to LA County Museum of Art and they had uh, Guernica on exhibit. So, which was all this weeping women that, you know, Guernica, if you look back in the history, you know, the, I think it's the Franks that uh, bombed them and they were defenseless and mm -hmm. just destroyed their city. And so they had a series of these women that are crying. So I, I picked a couple of them that I liked and started working as a reference to that. I just try to get this technique down. And, uh, but that's what I was doing in the very beginning. I was very art oriented. Wow. So how did it progress into comic pop culture kind of thing where you are now? I would say that uh, it's been ingrained with me since I was a kid. Star Wars came out in 1977. I did not see it in that weekend, but I did see it when it was re-released mm -hmm. in 1978. Yep. But uh, I got the Death Star, I had action figures, the land speed. I mean, oh, yeah. I just had oh, all yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it, it really, uh, I drank the Kool-Aid pretty quick mm -hmm. on pop culture. And so anything that would come out that was science fiction related, I'm, I'm there. And mind you, you know, this is the early 80s. It, Yep. You know, we're still barely in our double digits. And so when that happened, and then, of course, comic books uh, came in, in play <clears throat> around mid-'80s. 7-Eleven um, had a spinner rack. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first books I bought was uh, Dead Man. It was a uh, the four-part series. Oh, yeah. And uh, that artist, I know it's a long name. It's uh, Last name is uh, Lopez, I believe, but uh, that one hooked me good. Really, and plus my parents bought me, you know, Star Wars Marvel sure. Volume One for mm -hmm. me when I was heavily into Star Wars. I yep. got number one and number two. Destroy right. me, of course, <laughs> of course, we all did. So <laughs> that's really cool. So I, looking at your art, this is it's an aside. I just thought about it. I know you're pop culture driven, yeah. And since I first saw your art and got the um, some of your stuff, <laughs> but the sci-fi part of it, I'm a huge alien predator type thing. Have yeah. you ever done either one of those those? I've characters? done an alien piece, yes. You have. It should be in the book. If it's not in the book, then it will be my next one. Nice. Yeah. So okay. I did a piece for Alien for Retro Expo. Okay. And all of the um, aliens cast, the Marines, they all signed it. Oh, so that's, that's fun. cool. Yeah, it's fun. Very so, cool. Yeah, missing Michael Bean on there, but that'll come soon. Yes. So <laughs> when you um are out at shows mm -hmm. what are some of the, i mean like with me i was like wow this is this is different it took a it took me a back for back back up for a moment to understand and then you start realizing that it's candy wrappers like at first when i first looked at it i didn't i noticed it was different but i the candy wrapper didn't hit me until i noticed i tied two and two together like a, it took me a minute i was slow and it had <laughs> had you have your candy yeah dish mm -hmm. there Oh, it's candy. That's and it's just amazing. So, what are some of the questions that you get it revolving around how you do this? How'd you get started? Is it is it normal questions? Of how'd you? Why'd you think about this? How'd you do this? That type of thing. Well, truly, it was an accident. Yeah, uh, a happy accident. Yeah, I would say. Uh, and they always ask me, "Did you eat all the candy?" And they also ask me, "How long these these take?" And so yep. it really depends. Like I said, I said really depends. You yeah. Know, but so, so yeah. So do you do you find yourself having to <laughs> monitor what you eat? <laughs> yes. Uh, Gosh, I got a project uh, due. I need, I need wrappers. Oh yeah, I get some spike your uh, sugar <laughs> so you can get things done. But so the uh, I had a dentist visit, and it was just a cleaning. And the lady goes, "You got three cavities on your right side." So I uh, <laughs> I learned the hard way. My billfold as well. Right. Yeah. So, said i'm done yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so um i met you at a show yeah where are you going to be next where's your next your show for those out there who haven't met you or haven't seen your art in person because looking at it here in the other pieces we're going to show you it it's not the same as when you see it right yet in person you it feels the texture of some of the stuff because it's completely different i mean this right now just looks like a piece of art to you i'm sure um all you folks out there looking at it but Believe me, it's not. It's a lot different than just a regular regular piece of art. So yeah. where can they, where are you going to be at pretty soon? Okay, this weekend I'm going to be in Weatherford, Texas, and uh, it's going to be a one-day show. Uh, it's That's called the Collected? The, yes. The collected Travel sh Road, Travel yeah, Show, the, whatever? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So a Collected Road Show. Um, we're going to be at uh, Fairfield uh, Marriott. Okay. So it's a free show. You just bring, uh, donate uh, pet food, pet care uh, for a local shelter. And honestly, it's... Um, very chill, really relaxed, and nice. just to get in and go look around for some fun. Yeah, that's the 
that I found is kind of the best way when it's the shows that are free or yeah. cheap admission or whatever. It mm-hmm. gets people in, gets them talking. Um, so one of the things that I always tell or I like to discuss with my guests when I have you on is the culture of Comic Cons and what they become. Because yeah. I mean, using the term, I use Comic Con. I know a lot of times that's not the case. Like Fan Expo is more of a pop culture event than yeah, a it's, Comic it's Con. It's multimedia, yeah. Um, but with those... Have you found what's your biggest um, like and dislike of those shows? For me, my biggest like is the way everybody just gets along. It's this, it's like this huge family with yeah. people you don't know that are, right. but sure. you all have this in common, this innate um, man thing in common. Right. So um, I've only been doing this for a couple of years, by the way. Mm-hmm. So there two, there's a lot of things that I see that are pros and cons of. Um, of the market and not the market. Sorry about that guys. The pros and cons of the comic conventions that I go to and that I set up. Number one is what type of audience we're going to be getting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't, that's tough. Yeah. As far as the community is concerned. Yeah. They're great people. Everybody's real nice. You see the same folks too as well. Um, but the, that's one of the drawbacks I would say is you're out there, you're getting exposure, you're talking about your art and, you're, you know, you're telling the story mm-hmm. over and over again. Your elevator pitch, and that's fine. Right. Um, what's really difficult at times would be that um, where you're placed at is one. Yes. Uh, placement means a lot, and also, and mind you, you know, I have an I have an agent, mm-hmm. uh, Renee Witterstater, and she with Eva Eva Inc. Artist Group. If I can say that correctly. <laughs> um, let me say that one more time. Eva Inc. Artist Group. Okay. And so she sends me to these shows because they're a better fit for me. However, sometimes it's just, you know, you know, things just don't work out. But uh, so, but the thing is that um, you got to be ready for anything mm-hmm. and you have to adjust on the fly. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. kind of the same with the comics. Um, you know, I'll go to a show. I've, this year I'm trying to settle or focus more and find the shows like if I had success last year mm-hmm. now I want to do that show again that kind of right, thing right. if the audience was great um, for me it's about finding that show that's got the comic collectors yes. guys who want to buy comics yeah, exactly. and for you it's the guys who want original art pieces right so it's but they all intertwine so it's finding that nice mix of okay great because mm-hmm. I know you do um, art on blank um, covers as well correct yes yes, yes. So we can, if someone saw you at a show and said, hey, man, man, could you do this commission for me? Yeah. And hopefully don't ask you to have it done in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> but but so, so for instance, so with that, if I said, because m- my favorite character everybody knows is Blue Marvel. If I uh, said, said, hey, you know, I want you to do a Blue Marvel sketch. I mean, not sketch, um, artwork for me, art piece for me. Mm-hmm. I know it's not going to take, I know you're busy here and all that, but here's the sketch. I mean, here's the blank. Here's money. Can you send that to me later? Is that something that you could do? That, Absolutely. That way, it gives you time to work on it. That kind of thing. Yeah. And is it possible for pe- for people to reach out to you and say, "Hey, um, you know, my daughter is big into um, Disney or whatever. Could you do a piece for her? Can they reach out to you and have you do stuff like that through Absolutely. the interwebs and all that kind of thing? Uh, they can, and they can also go through my, you know, go through Renee cool. and, as well. So there's. Two different ways to do that. So either she'll get the re- request, or if I get mm-hmm. them, you know, I send them to her as well. But, nice. uh, but definitely, yeah, absolutely. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, we'd like for pe- for people to be able to, because for me, I like, and I'm gonna have you do an Adam for me at some point, <laughs> just because I've had a few people do Adams for me because that's like my character. So having different art is really really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so having different pieces is really nice of the same character by different artists, different takes. Yeah, because I noticed everyone, that. Yeah. Because every artist that I know sees a character but sees it through a different lens. Yes. So it's a little it, – it's the, and I can always tell, oh, it's the same character, but I haven't looked at him that way before, mm-hmm. the way you might see him. So that's really cool. Yeah, the Swamp Thing, the collector for this one, that was a commission piece. And uh, Jerry, who runs Eastern Rim – Yes. He's a Swamp Thing collector, straight out. Yep. That's all he loves. And so he's always asked artists, just do Swamp Thing, just do Swamp Thing. That's all I want to see. So that was my rendition of it. And yeah. He was very he was very impressed, very happy. As he it. should be. I love it. <laughs> this is great. This is one of my – I'm. everyone knows I'm not a DC guy, but right, when it comes right. to DC, Black Adam and Swamp Thing are the two that I gravitate toward. Yeah. So 
it works. Mm -hmm. So give you a quick second to, you brought some pieces with you. I did. I want you to talk about those for a second, just what they are, kind of the inspiration. I know a couple of them are sold, so they can't, yeah. but still, okay. just so, so people get an idea of what you do. Sure. Let me get this out here of the, this right here is my Deadpool versus Old Man Logan. And I'm bringing this out to your attentions because when we were at the Dallas Comic Show, uh, I was sketching this out, and this is how. Sorry about that. You're good. This is how this turned out. That's so cool. Uh, I'm looking at the. Yeah, I goals. haven't talked yet, but that's rad. <laughs> <laughs> that's Josh. He, I knew at some point he was going to say something about something. The uh, the best thing about it was uh, the the original sketch. I had his. Uh, his his claws going right up his nose instead mm -hmm. of underneath his chin. I was like, no, nah, <laughs> he wants to skewer him. He might yeah. as well do it that way. So I had fun with that. And uh, so I started with the sketch mm -hmm. and brought it back to the house, refined it on my iPad and uh, got it all together. So when it was right, it was time to go. That's so cool. So And I kept it pretty clean. I yeah. mean, it's 9-8 clean right yeah, now. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So with your pieces just mm -hmm. a quick aside when you do a piece mm -hmm. and you do um i know some of yours are one of ones and the others you have in uh your sketchbook yeah. that i purchased up from you mm -hmm. how does it go from being that one of one is it something that you scan in and then reproduce it or is it yeah. how's that process done yeah the small pieces i can scan in the larger ones i have to take a photo and bring it into lightroom and clean it up and okay. make sure that it'll print correctly right and so, but I do leave all the imperfections and all the divots in there. That's, that's what gives it the character. Yes. So I, I do very, very minimal. Um, most of it is just color correction. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. What's your next piece? Oh, this right here is a, did I bring it? Oh, I didn't bring it. Oh, this is my Daredevil piece. Let's do that one. Yeah, because he's hot right now. <laughs> yeah. And with the Echo, with the Echo going on and all that. It's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Big Daredevil fan. Oh. Yeah. You'll like this piece then, Josh. Josh, you didn't see this one? I don't think he did. I don't think <laughs> I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at the angle here. Basically, this is the Born Again uh, type of uh, motif. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, the church is in the background. Of course, I added the stained glass kind of a, in a way in the city that uh, uh, completes his uh, shoulders. And so this is kind of a negative space type of a feel, but I really enjoyed it. This is actually a, another original sketch that I pulled off. And then when I started, after I finished the sketch, I started taking away pieces that I, how much I can take away to not only get it onto this sketchbook, but sketch cover, but also to completely tell the story about what Born Again, uh, you know, where he, you know, was brought back to the church to, you know, after he got <laughs> beat the crap out of yeah. him. So, but that's part of, you know, it's part of this, that scenario and everything. I didn't put everything there, obviously, but right. uh, the city being on the, the foreground, but the church is being his, uh, his uh, stability with his mom and yeah. so on. So that was really, I thought it was kind of a good idea and I enjoyed Absolutely. that. That, oh, this is so cool. I just, I, <laughs> man, it still just blows my mind that you can let alone draw that, yeah. but then go back in with the candy wrappers. It still amazes me that this is candy wrapper. Oh, yeah. So, and you got to remember, I was t talking to you outside saying, you know, if I'm not doing, um, working on a piece, I'm actually sketching or looking for other ideas mm -hmm. on, yes. either on the iPad or through my uh, my sketchbook. And one of the things that I told you is that I'm always staying busy, right. not busy, busy, but just keep my mind going. Mm -hmm. So if I have an idea, it'll come out really quickly and I'll be able to get to the sketch uh get the roundabout way before I, I lose that. Yeah. Yeah. So before you use the, uh, that vision. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I exactly. am with, man, I, man, that's how I am with thoughts. If I don't write it down, <laughs> it's, like, oh, this is a great idea. And then it's gone. If I don't write it down, I'm like, oh, Josh, I had this. It'll come back to me. <laughs> It'll come back four episodes yeah. down the road. Yeah. I've got to write it down. Yeah. Cool. So, okay. I got to ask you about that Harley piece. The, I mean, Poison Ivy. Why Poison Harley? Ivy. Yeah. Harley is in my head. I don't know why. Okay. This Poison Ivy piece, uh, I we made. We know why. <laughs> Do what? Shut up, Josh. We, we all know why. Every, <laughs> poison Ivy's in all of our minds, somewhere there. This is a sold piece oh. that I'm bringing, and uh, this right here, I'm trying to get make sure there's no, okay, good. 
And this is 11 by 17. This is all made with candy wrappers and foil wrappers. And uh, in the past, I've done a lot of botanical work. So I was I knew what I was getting into as far as uh, all the vines and um, make sure that um, she was completely green except for her hair and give it as much depth as I could to keep her recluse and hidden, you know, for the storyline of her dad uh, modifying her genetics. Yeah. And uh, obviously she wasn't really happy about that. So that was my idea of that. And I made this for New York City, New York Comic Con to bring as a good showpiece and hopefully get it sold. But uh, it sold online instead Awesome. to a good friend of mine. And so I couldn't even get it on, out on the table. Yeah, I can I can understand. <laughs> this is a, man, that's a great piece. I yeah. love the depth. Yeah. The depth of, I mean, it just, it just is amazing. Yeah. One of the other things I will tell you on a technical side is that uh, usually I use a lot of cool colors like blues and um, down to mm-hmm. to get a, more of a definition. I didn't use any blues this time, and uh, so it was more of a discipline piece for me to uh, work things through to learn something new. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So did you take, when you do something like that that's out of your ordinary with like this one, mm-hmm. do, do you take a little extra pride in that and that, oh, I went outside of my realm of comfort and kind of... Oh, I have to keep, I got to keep doing that. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. Um, there's a... Uh, no, sh- no short of learning new things when it comes right. to techniques will always be there. But if you learn new ways to do it, that's that's what makes it yeah, that's fun cool. over and over again. Such a cool uh, piece. Gotta put the seed. Okay. Uh, this one is my Ahsoka, and this is a portrait done of Rosario Dawson. But the fun part is, it's signed by Rosario Dawson. Oh snap! <laughs> That's really cool. She, uh, it got retweeted by her social team, and uh, I was talking to my boss, and I was like, what is wrong with my phone? And sure enough, there was about 60,000 impressions on there, and I was getting retweets. And, I mean, I don't know what was going on, but this is on Twitter. I rarely get on Twitter, or Mm -hmm. X. X. Yeah. Formerly. Twitter, yeah. formerly known as X. I'm um, X, formerly yeah. known as Twitter. Yeah. Twitter, yeah. Twitter in our hearts and minds. Yeah, yeah, it's still Twitter. <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, so I took it to Fan Expo Dallas last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, I waited three hours and yeah, got it signed. Yeah, that line was long. Line was long. And it was worth resellers it. were resellers uh, yeah. were making a nice chain around the. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But I made sure she saw it. And uh, so the so what, tra- hmm? what What did she think? Uh, her mouth is dropped. Really? That's all. I mean, she's like, Great. how in the world? That's amazing. Yeah. yeah really that's, was. yeah, that's a vote of confidence. It is. Someone it like is. her. I got that? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so is that piece for sale by chance? That is for sale. That Ooh. one is for sale. Yes. Okay. So the Ahsoka piece is for sale. Ooh. Um, another blank sketch cover that I have here, I did, uh, I did the sketch work actually in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was at, uh, Retro Expo. Retro Expo. Yeah. Were you there? No. Okay. Uh, man, that's one of them that's on my list to do. Okay. Yeah, they they go to Plano, New Braunfels, mm-hmm. down there this last. And so they're, they're mostly just in these three states. Right. Okay. But this is a, a, my Cyclops piece, and I did the preliminaries at actually on the cover, but I went back and uh, reworked some of the areas, and I decided to put it on a House of X blank. And it's a little different. But uh, I kind of enjoy it, and it was it was off the cuff, so I went ahead and just fleshed it out and made it work. Yeah, I like his optic blast. The way you know you normally see it in comics is a straight, solid right. piece, and this is spread oh. out. It's really, really cool looking. I like that. So yeah, and again, utilizing the the white background. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, this the next one I have is yeah, this is one I really like. Oh, no, thank you. This is one I really <laughs> like. Josh will like this one, I think, too. This is an original piece as well that I actually drew first, and this is my Moon Knight that's uh, done in line art. But, oh, uh, yeah. This Moon Knight here is really, really cool. That is rad. Uh, up close, you can't really see it, but uh, I got a lot of, uh, of, of blues that are mixed in with whites, and I just layered it up with salt water taffy wrappers just to get it to that, that depth. Um, I put the lines in first, and from there, um, I covered around it to give it more of a mummified type of feel. I mean, it's very low relief, but this piece right here has, in the inside, has a lot of foils. So in the in the sunshine or in, with light on mm-hmm. it, it'll all the inside illuminates. So, That's really cool. So really that really would cool. be a great piece to display in a room that's well lit, sunlight, yes. that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. That yeah, cool. it's um, very much so. That's awesome. Okay. 
And this is it right here. Oh, yeah. This this one's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My friends, uh, Michael over at Comic Shield, uh, he has a uh, imprint called uh, Verified Cards. Have you seen the yes. Verified? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So he went ahead and did a print. We did 25 prints of this. I got about about 10 left. And this is my Ghost Rider that I really enjoy. And he added uh, a glass texture to kind of emulate uh, the wrappers, the texture of the mm -hmm. wrappers that you can't really see unless you see it in person. Right. But uh, this is my Ghost Rider that I did. And uh, a little bit on the shiny side, but uh, this is my abstract version of Ghost Rider. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, we, we both like that. Yeah. So there's a bit of uh, torment that I wanted to, to give instead of vengeance because he's still because of what he did and, um, you know, selling his soul mm -hmm. and everything else. Um, he still has that torment yeah. in him besides going out and, you know, chain slapping yeah. somebody. <laughs> <laughs> <don't know>. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So I want to show one uh, show one more. So this is something I picked up. It's um, an art book. Yeah. And this is like a lot of just um, prints of your work. Right. Um, so Josh and I, for the one that we like, and I think everybody will like, is the Miles. Oh, yeah. The Upside Down Miles yeah. is... This to me is just amazing. The original would be great. Oh, I'm sure it's yeah. sold yeah, a long time sold, ago. Yeah. But yeah, there's just so much in here. There's all kinds of Star Wars, just tons and tons of great, great things. Mm -hmm. So again, this is the type of stuff I like talking about because it's it's comics, but it's a different light on comics. It's That's a right. different look into comics, a different view, so to speak. And even um, someone who's not per se a comic fan, but an art fan. Right could enjoy this you know absolutely as and for me it's kind of a mixture of both because i can't i know most everybody knows this about me if it can be the best written comic ever right. if the art is bad i can't fight through it <laughs> <laughs> so i'm very visual mm -hmm. so the art has to be important that's like i think that's why i'm always gravitating toward artists booths at cons and conventions it's just i want to go and see and talk to you about how your creative process works because i cannot draw for anything so it always amazes me when people can um, but this stuff is just next level to me um, so if someone wants to reach out if they want to get a commission if they want to just look at your work I know you're on Instagram you're on sure. Twitter uh, I think you're on Facebook yep. I believe mm -hmm. um, where can they find you uh, it's real easy it's pop rap art it is P-O-P W-R-A-P-A-R-T and on all platforms I was able to get every single handle nice. to be the same it's pop rap art Great. Yeah. So they can find you. Um, you say that. So uh, you said that the um, the uh, poison ivy sold. Yes. Sold online. It did. So 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 you have an online store. Is no. it just they messaged me they messaged and they messaged you. me. Uh, the owner of that messaged me two or three times actually. So oh cool. Yeah. So they can message me through um, either Facebook or Instagram. It's pretty quick. If they want to need to go through the channels well, through Renee, that's mm -hmm. fine too. Okay. Yeah. And if there's something up that they see, they can ask about that. Hey, is this for sale? Um, or do you have an original of that? Or they can just say, hey, Dan Daniel, my kid's a Sailor Moon fan. Can you do a Sailor Moon piece for her? And sure. And talk sense. it out and figure it out and get all the logistical stuff taken care of. Yeah, do all the quotes, do everything, make sure, sure it's right, and then I'll go through and uh, – Make sure I'll get a uh, mock up for them instead of just surprising them. Right. <laughs> make sure. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> hey, you like it? <laughs> yeah. But so uh, the uh, but yeah. So I make sure everything's in line before I do the execution. Cool. Yep. So I know your art style is different than the average comic mm -hmm. writer or artist. Have you been ever approached about doing maybe a cover for a comic? My first cover was released in October of 2023. First candy wrapper cover, I'm sorry. I've done some Photoshop type work before, mm -hmm. too, for um, a self-published uh, come. Uh, it was uh, Charter Comics. It was okay. here local uh, oh, yeah. for uh, Mother's Whisper is the name of the book. But okay. but anyways, uh, yeah, you know Chris Hayes. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, yes. Yeah. And then, uh, but this one here was for Garrett Gunn. Is, the book is called I Hate You, Please Die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's Very a, specific. It's a heartwarming affair. Yeah, it is. I hate you, please die. Let me okay. grab this real quick. Sure. Okay, yeah. Fell on the side. So, Garrett, I met him over at 181 Comics. Mm -hmm. And 181, they had an in store for his Good Boy Volume 2. And yeah. So, yeah. Sean, all those guys over there. Love yeah. Him. Love him. I'm no. I, 
I've known Sean for probably five years now. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. So James is. Yeah, he's yeah. so wired. Sean's always going like a thousand miles. I mean, even if he's standing still, yeah. he's moving at frenetic paces. It's crazy. Yeah. James, there's actually, um, I, I have a lot to be thankful for, especially for James Dawson mm-hmm. and for David as well. But uh, there's, a, there's a timeline that happened, um, uh, how this all came about, like how I got through to the conventions and, you know, getting these opportunities. Mm-hmm. But uh, I did the book called I Hate You, Please Die, and I was uh, cover F. And uh, this was on Kickstarter, and it was a metal, textured metal, they called it. Um, they only made 15 of these things, and so I made sure I got one graded. This is my uh, my first book here. It is basically, um, it's a candy wrap theme because it is Willy Wonka uh, homage in a sense. But <laughs> Makes sense. It's, yeah, well, I mean, it's an original piece wow, in a that's... sense because I uh, I took the, the pose that he's done before. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's seen that, but uh, what's going on around it is basically telling the story of what the book is uh, about. So, I Hate You, Please Die are the five words that you can say to, you know, with this pact made with with the devil, which is, you know, Willy Wonka in this manner. Uh, But, uh, and so if anybody has given him a hard time, you know, he said those words and they would explode and it's really disgusting and things. (laughs) But but, uh, Garrett did a good job. He's actually Mm -hmm. a great writer and this... This book here means a lot to me because this yeah, is the first absolutely. one. So that's really cool. Maybe a professional. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, the but the thing, do you want to hear about that timeline? What happened? Yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. And really quick, uh, I met a guy. Actually, somebody introduced me to a collector, and he kept me busy for about a year and a half. And this collector I found through LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And uh, so since then, he's an art collector, likes emerging artists, and so he gave me a bunch of, you know, these commissions to do. And I'm like, okay. So then all of a sudden it got into Star Wars. I'm like, you sure about this? And, yeah, go right ahead. You know, just tell Mm -hmm. me to go ahead and do so. So I did, and it really caught a lot of people's attention because I was so used to doing still life work, botanicals, flowers, and things. Mm -hmm. And so when I got in that, I was like, this is really something. I didn't think it would. So... In, in my defense, you know, I wasn't, you know, I think I was ready for it, but right. I was. Yeah. So it went from from him to Chris Hayes and the guys over at uh, Pastime, from Pastime to 181 with James Dawson. James Dawson introduced me to the North Texas uh, Comic Collector Club over on Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's a private, uh, can't really call it private, there's several of us. Right, yeah. right. And then from there, I went to meet everybody and brought my artwork, and that's where I met Renee. Nice. And then Renee uh, got me out to New York City. I have a piece out there right now, a George Washington portrait. Nice. Yeah. And so it's in a museum down in the financial district. So you were the basically the pebble at the top of the seat, top of the ski slope that just started rolling down here and just build momentum. This has been since uh, right around uh, the end of the pandemic. Wow. And it's been going. I mean, I am very thankful. That's why I said I'm very grateful for this. So now. Working with her, for instance, I'm learning uh, about the con scene. I'm learning about uh, our next steps and mm-hmm. what we can do. Um, you know, literally, I'm a hybrid between the comic art side to the fine art side. So yep. it's I have more opportunities than I ever imagined. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, but the bottom line is that I can still sit down, and still create, and still think about things. And yep. Well, I'm glad you made yeah. it to the comic book side. Yeah. Um, that's the important part. Um, yeah. The botanical side is cool, but yeah, this is the question. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a this lot is, of that. Yeah. yeah, this is the important stuff for me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool. I'm really glad I got to meet you at, um, back in the summer. Um, mm-hmm. Eastern Rim, I think it was. Eastern was Rim. was Jerry's show. Yeah. 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 Um, he's a great guy. He's, oh, yeah, man, I've great. seen him that's a few great. times, yeah. and he's he's a great guy. I'll be going back back this year. I'm actually for that. I um, really enjoy it. But um, so pop rap art. That's on it. all Rap platforms, Rap. that's where they can find you. Um, reach out, ask for a commission, go buy something that's there. He has, I think you still have these, correct? The book. Those the, are sold out. Sold out. But hey, I'm, in the, I got I'm, one. <laughs> I'm in the middle of looking at some paper to do mm-hmm. one uh, on recycled material. Oh, cool. So that'd be even better. So I like things that are matte finished, but mm-hmm. I also like the rag paper that we get from the comics. Yep. Uh, not necessarily the modern ones, but it's basically copper down. Mm-hmm. Um, has that that feel that I like right. and the not necessarily on the thinnest side, but just 
it feels like a comic book to yes, me. Yes, so absolutely. That's what I, yeah. Absolutely. So this weekend in Weatherford, correct? Yes. Okay, so it's a Saturday only? Yes. Okay, what are the hours of that? 11 to 6. 11 to 6. And yeah. what's the location again? Fairfield Inn. It's a Marriott. And okay. it's right off of I-20 um, and Main Street South. You can't miss it. Great. It's, yeah. So they can come out, see it in person yeah. for themselves there. Uh, sounds like it's going to be a, be a great event. It's going to be a cheap event. It's free. Yeah. So it's pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. And go out. You can If you don't buy anything, you can just go around and look at stuff and see. That's one of the things that I always like to do at the shows is go around and look at everything that's going on because – there's always something for everyone there, whether Absolutely. you're into comics, Star Wars, Funko Pops, Funko Pops yeah, sure. cosplay, whatever. There's always stuff going oh, yeah. on at these things, and that's what makes it so much fun to me. Um, Pop Rap Art, again, you can uh, reach out. Go to um, – I know there's a lot of stuff on Instagram that you've done. I really like just scrolling and seeing what I've missed, some of the pieces. Ah, oh, that one, that one. And sometimes just looking at some things gives me some, me some ideas of something I would want for myself. Right. Even if it's something that you've sold, if it's a different piece, I can think, oh, I want that something. Right. To, we'll that, just that, rework that it yeah. and find a yeah. different pose for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. Exactly. So, um, and again, this is not something that you can go out and say, hey, um, you can't go Saturday in Weatherford and see him at 2 o'clock and say, hey, here's this blank. Finish it in an hour. It's not going <laughs> to work. But you can go out and say, hey. I had this idea. Here's a blank. How much would it cost? Mm-hmm. Send it to me, or I'll pick it up and work it out. Work out all those details. Oh. Um, but I really, really have enjoyed this. This is quite intriguing to me. Um, and again, folks, I don't. You know, I support a lot of a lot of people, but everyone I support, I've supported myself. Um, so I really do think highly of this art style. Um, I love it actually. So and and until you see it in person, like man, again, all this stuff. Looks great on the screen, as you can tell. But when you see it in person, it's completely different. Yeah. You'll actually see the texture, the way it's created, and it's absolutely amazing. Um, thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, thank you all for um, watching again. Um, please go hit the like, subscribe button, yes. com- and comment, leave comments for Daniel, uh, reach out to him on his socials, say hello, mm-hmm. ask questions, ask for commissions, whatever you want to do. Um, if you like the content that you're seeing, please let me know. If you don't like it, I'll take that as well. Just let me know. <laughs> Any way I can uh, create and make it better, that's what I want to do because I'm doing this for you. I don't like yeah. talking to myself. So <laughs> hopefully people are watching. Um, once again, guys, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Daniel. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good one, guys.